All right, all right, okay, here we go. So, today I wanted to take a little walk around a garden, a small garden that I've been working on with some other people. And just to, to document what's blooming right now, what, um, what the situation is and what some plans are for the future of this place. All right, so here is the garden. And it is at the end of a cul-de-sac. And it's framed sort of kind of in a regular space. This garden is actually part of this park, which is uh, called Southwest Corridor. It's in Boston and it runs along the line of the, the subway and the Amtrak. And those are, those railroad tracks are just over the, those mounds over there. So it's about a five mile long park and it has these little appendages, these community garden appendages, and then this space, which was really just a blank space. As you can see, there are a, lot, a bunch of daffodils, different varieties of daffodils. There's a sort of a small, man, yeah, the light's really bad, a small whitish one, and then there's the larger yellow ones. Got a bunch of those. And then in between there are some other nice plants this is a this is called a uh, flowering or not flowering this is a polychrome spurge euphorbia polychroma and this is uh, a really nice plant it blooms in the spring with these yellow blossoms and then in the summer, it's it's green and it has nice, the leaves are a, sort of a nice texture and color. And then in the fall, it turns a really nice shade of red. So it's a three, really a three season plant. Also coming up right now are, is this patch of um, bee balm or bergamot, Monarda didyma is a, it's, botanical name and it uh, is a fragrant plant in the mint family that is native to North America it's a North American plant and it's really attractive to insects beneficial insects and that that blooms in the summer back there there are some violets and then two clumps there's a one here it's kind of hard to see but it's this is another North American plant, fragrant plant called mountain mint. Pycnanthemum is the, the botanical name. And it is similar to this Monarda in that it will, it, they form little patches because they spread by runners. So they can be a little bit hard to deal with, but because this is a slightly shady area, I'm hoping that they won't get too out of control. Those light green plants there are Virginia bluebells and those should bloom in the next few weeks. Interspersed in here, these kind of fringy ones are called um, winter aconite. These are some of the most, er the earliest plants to bloom that have actually already blossomed and are now um, finishing their yearly life cycle. They, they bloom in early March, so they're really nice to have uh, for early in the season. Back here, this is a, the beginning of a prairie cone flower, Ratibida pinata, which will uh, gets very big. You can see the stems there. It gets to about five, six feet tall, and it has yellow flowers toward the toward August, late July and August. Some daylilies over here in the corner. On the other side, there's some irises and more winter aconite. I planted about a hundred winter aconite bulbs and not all of them came up, not all of them survived. Um, it's a difficult plant to establish. And uh, <laughs> as you can see here, 
there were, I planted a, a several um, bare root uh, plants of another wildflower called bloodroot. I, I marked it with a tag. Bloodroot is Sanguinaria canadensis. And this is a very nice plant. And I'm pretty disappointed because none of it can either one one of them started to come up last week and then it disappeared and I have a feeling that squirrels have been here digging because you can see actually the digging. I think that's what happened to the blood root. This is echinacea coming up there. And then I have another variety of iris. Iris crestata, which is a uh, a native it's a North American variety. And then there's these bushes. These were already here. We didn't put these here. The yew hedge, the um, azalea, and then there's um, a bigger uh, rhododendron. So we we're kind of working around those. And then in the, the other areas, there's some tulips planted there. And then we were using this area to, to, to grow vegetables last year and some, I'm not sure what we're going to do here this year. Um, there's some parsley that came back. And some chamomile. So, that's, that's the, the walkthrough. What's the general idea that's going on here is... To try to make something, so this is not a, this garden is not a, um, this garden is, is meant to be aesthetic. It's not meant to be a place to produce food. It's not a great place, it's not a great site for vegetable production actually because it's, it doesn't get a full eight hours of sun. Uh, the most it gets is around six. So you can grow food here, but it's not, it's kind of an uphill battle. So the idea is to make something aesthetic. And the principle that I'm trying to apply is what's known as a mixed border. The idea is a mixed border, and that's a term that you hear a lot in, in the English and American gardening style. And basically what it is, is a a frame that a framing device that that is composed of various plants of a mixture of plants it's a mixed border so here of course usually mixed borders frame lawns big lawns there's no lawn here and this is a much smaller space but there is a central feature which is the path and so the mixed borders the idea is to create these borders that will frame the path. And the, this is a, it's a simple idea, but it's also difficult to, to achieve for two reasons. And, and one, is, there's a balance of factors that you have to get right. And one of them is that uh, it's important in a mixed border, in this concept, to have things that bloom and look nice at different times, at different points of time in the year. So right now, right now it looks okay. Uh, there are a bunch of flowers blooming and they're kind of spaced around. There's some different colors, different textures, but in two weeks, most of these flowers will be gone. So these are all flowers that come up in the spring and um, then by the end of May, the flowers have, have died back and all that you're left with is the, the foliage that's kind of spent and it's on its way out. So the life cycle of those plants for the year is, is in decline. So if all we planted were daffodils and other spring flowers, then the only interesting time to walk in this garden would be in May. And what we want is something that is interesting all from you know around April all the way through October so the idea is to plant things that come in waves that bloom and they look nice in waves 
to create a succession of different plants. And that's a tricky thing because what you want is when these start fading, you want something else to come and grow over it basically, or take your attention away from it. So that's, that's the idea with, with mixing things like the daffodils and the, the monarda. The, the monarda comes, it's a summer blooming plant. It's just getting started now. It's gonna get about three times as tall as this and then shade out or cover up some of this dying foliage and produce its own flowers that will attract attention. Same thing with the cone flower and the, and the mountain mint. The other tricky thing to do in this situation is uh, when you have a small space is not to, is to limit, actually limit the variety of plants, which sounds counterintuitive to what, to the idea of succession and having a mix, but you don't want to have, you want to limit it also because if you put too many plants in a small space, you can only have one or two of each of them. And one or two of something doesn't look nearly as interesting and doesn't make nearly as much of an impact as 10 of something. So here the daffodils, you know, make an impact because there are, there are a bunch of them. So you don't want to just have one plant of this and one plant of that because then you have a, a sort of a museum display or a specimen. And you know, there are specimen gardens, that, that is a type of gardening, but um, it's not what I'm trying to do here. So the key is to find seven or eight really good plants that bloom at different times of the year and that you can form clumps or clusters of or spread around um, to make some sort of um, coherency. And uh, last year, I didn't, you know, last year was the first year we were all working here. So it didn't quite happen. Um, the, you know, there's only, there's kind of right now, in the spring it's okay, but in the summer it's more of a, the summer is what needs, what needs work. So um, my idea is to try to increase, try to get some more, maybe move some things, maybe move some of these individual plants together or to a different space that's actually more sunny and then find two or three summer blooming and then late summer fall blooming plants that um, I can get three or four of and uh, put in here and make that kind of um, succession impact. So we will see what happens. I mean, this season's gonna be different um, because obviously everyone's trying to limit contact and uh, there's not a great time to be going to the store and certainly not a, a time to be working in groups together but uh, there's a good foundation and we'll see what we can do all right I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off and go back inside <laughs>